Welcome everybody, here's your strategy wall and welcome back to Victoria 3, welcome back to our Mexican Republic in 1884 and welcome back to our still kind of new President Valeriano Caserta who took over after the death of Benito Juarez, uh, Benito, Benito Juarez, <laughs> Benito Juarez, exactly, and yeah, is facing his first real election but at the moment it looks kind of good for him to get re-elected. Um, same time of course he's facing this internal crisis between the progressive forces and the old forces or the rich uh, there's a lot of sub forces also as i feel like where we placated most of the yeah, the entirety of the country apart from the few industrialists that want to push for wealth voting um the moment it's kind of stalled so yeah with with the elected bureaucrats who are also just in the beginning so this is where we are, have, have to have an eye on apart from this we're trying to of course extend our economy and we just sent out the question to El Salvador to get annexed into our Mexican country and there we go they are so we can annex also another state into our country and therefore have basically all of Central America apart from um, the British possessions in our hands which yeah you could say of course you gotta get these british possessions in the end i'm quite happy to trade with them without any convoys so it's not so bad for now maybe later in in the progress if we instead of a hippie uh, mexican republic end up with a, a mexican fascism in the end and then we want to uh, unite everything and conquer everything we might go for that but i highly doubt it especially since also remember there's not so long to go until actually the military forces are a little bit ruled out of our the strong influence they traditionally had here in the age of Caudillo ends. Caudillos will end. Uh, we shall see. Until then, let's just jump in and see where the, what the future brings and where we'll go. Um, right now, of course, we're facing also partially these um, 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 financial problems a little bit, but hopefully with the increasing economy, which whoop. <laughs> yeah, it has been weird times the war and the revolutions and uh, have brought um interesting times to mexico and let's see where we're going to interesting by the way i didn't know that el salvador is actually really um carved out here as a singular state i thought it would be grow up in a bigger one yeah i have to check out actually more about the history of central america for me it's um I haven't really like Okay, there's split in the... Oh, no, they were always split up, I think. I haven't really been. I've been to Guatemala since I have a good friend from there, and it's been an awesome experience. I've been to Mexico itself, so basically here I've been myself. Um, Yucatan and... Uh, no, not Veracruz, just Yucatan and Guatemala. This is where I traveled in Belize. So I know this part. And I've met people here where I live in Munich in southern Germany. Where I've met people from... And now I'm embarrassed. Were they Nicaraguan or El Salvadorian? <laughs> uh, yeah... So, in, in, in starts, of course, I know as I talked in the brief phase of this very, um, um, let's say I talked about the history that they, they were part of the New Spain um, Vice Royalty, like what we represent now, basically this kind of Mexico or New Spain as you want, if you want. So, I don't know what made them actually split from Mexico and then Central America in these tiny states and if you're from there let me know actually um I, I, I might forget looking it up in a short time but what what is the key question or key um, reason for your country for example being independent and separate from the others so of course now there's different cultures i assume but um, back in the day where nation building just happened i'm pretty sure there was no strong identity as nicaraguan or so well let me know if you know that. And here we stay basically with the same government. Uh, they can keep on ruling. I would love to see a high legitimacy, but it is what it is. All the same. Um, apart from this, there was something about the second and the our fleets. Okay, let's quickly take care of that. Mm. Ah, okay. The second Mexican fleet is basically just the El Salvadorian fleet, I assume. Torpedo boats and monitors. I think I'll make them just join join the Armada de Mexico for the moment at least. And at some point we should maybe consider in a Caribbean and Pacific fleet. Right now we just have our Caribbean fleet. Where are we stationed at here in Yucatan? I think it needs to be extended at some point, anyways, since this is ridiculously low and allows enemies to land easily anywhere. And when I say enemies, of course I'm looking north. <laughs> Yeah. 
In the meantime, we get organized sports. Uh, sports aren't just for those playing them. They're a show, an expression of community, a place where a crowd can feel like they belong. Their spectacle of sports matters just as much as the feats, feats committed on the field. Maybe a little bit early, but okay. I don't know, to be honest, when... You now there have been uh, sports clubs earlier in Europe, at least. You know, so it's actually... Makes sense. Uh, and to be honest, I'm not really 100% sure where we are right now in terms of we do already have electrical generation, so we're quite far advanced over here. Maybe this, yeah, more companies and international exchange might be the, or oh, actually analytical philosophy. Oh yeah, definitely gotta go for it after uh, war propaganda to speed up our research process a little bit. Ismail Franco is exiled. Universal suffrage, huh? Can we invite him? The Peruvian. Um, and we have a hat trick. Whilst the government debates the merits of elected bureaucrats, several newspapers have published polemics by Felipe Tovilla trying to invoke an obscure law against it. He is really annoying. Can we get him somehow out? Um, Lawyers affiliated with the Petit Bourgeois pointed out uh, said law is invalid. An example of an obscure, debatably redundant law is that a hat must be worn while making a point of order. This law does not specify which hat to wear, only that it would be worn and the point of order made. Thus, it would be very good from a uh, form to wear a dunk cap when making an invalid point of order. I'm not sure what a dunsk or dunky cap. Maybe it's just you know, a cap in the end. <laughs> Um, yeah, public for pa. Yeah, he's an. Yeah, we are not big fan of him. We would like to get him out. No, definitely he strike this useless law. He definitely does. We no, we want to blame him. So this should. I don't know. Knowing his popularity, neutral. Yeah, and uh, influence the revolution progress maybe a little bit. Hmm. The stalemate is interesting. The good thing is, I mean, in the worst case, what we're still, what I like is that basically the, yeah, other parties have been recovering in their opinion a lot from the other changes that have been made so far. So I feel like once we would stop the electorate bureaucrats, we might even fall back to a state where the rest is not that revolutionary anymore. And since the progress is not that great, and yeah, we're slowly growing, and I don't want this revolution to start under no circumstance, no circumstance, no. But I don't want it to start. By the way, nice to see how you now our GDP is really growing. Um, we have to have a close eye. <laughs> it's basically last year's. It's what our presidents have to do to balance everything. But maybe with the um, economical progress in the country, growing wealth and so forth, people get less dowdy about the two things. Why is anybody exporting from us? get some steel from the Brits. How about our steel industry? I mean, it's not huge, but maybe we should also... Yeah, it's already in the production in Rio Grande, okay. Where well, we actually get... While well, we're just talking about, we get the open hearth... Hearth? Pros, open hearth? Hearth? Hearth, I guess. It's a special process to uh, burn out the impurities from a pig iron and thus allow it to return into steel. Should definitely allow us to also you upgrade our current ones. We should. Yes, we should. Making our little steel uh, industry already more um, effective. Yeah. Uh, these revolution symbols are really not nice to see. <laughs> Dewout scandal. It has been revealed that Jose Maria Diaz of the Catholic Church has been having a secret affair with a member of the clergy. Wait, what? Am I? He? A member of the clergy with a nun or what? His resignation is being demanded. The very fact that the sneaky bastard thought he could get away with such a gross misuse of his power shows everything wrong with the leadership of the Catholic Church. But at the moment, we're fine with them. <laughs> the people must know of his depravity or ignore it. Mm. Well, that's, the people must know of his depravity at the moment. It's fine since um, Catholic Church can be there. They are happy, but they don't have to be too big because probably when we fall back into a situation and want to modernize the country, there will be 
and enemy again. Oh my god, and here we're slowly going up. That's not good. Why? That we have an increase in now we have an increase in radicals. And the supply went to very high. Oh when oh, but now we're at 70, we're at zero percent again. <laughs> oh my god. I don't want to go too much up, not that there's some event that suddenly kicks in and tosses us over the cliff and basically uh, throws us into a civil war. Yeah, the rest is kind of okay over here, but... By the way, I think we're not doing any diplomacy. We could need a rival, but... Um... I mean, just somebody from South America, maybe. Or maybe actually New Granada. And let's do that, by the way. That's a good idea, actually. We, because, okay, that's the new foreign goal we want to have. Also, Panama. How big is New Granada in terms of... Uh, battalions? Okay, they're no threat to us at all. So this is actually okay. Let's get the New Granada rivalry out. So, are they rivals with them as well? Since Ecuador would join our custom units if we ask nicely. But maybe let's do the defensive pack first then. Do we have one with Venezuela as well? I think so, right? So we're surrounding the new Granada. Let's see if they will join. Uh, hmm. What do you want to... Should we give them a hook? I think so. Why actually not? How's the Ecuadorian market lo looking like? Uh, the market looking like? We have... Yeah, of course they're lacking industrial goods and they have... These cheap goods that we also have. That's just an addition. It's very similar probably to our small... By the way, let's cancel a couple of the unproductive trade route. Haven't done this in a while, so... See where this leads us to. We need more motors, of course, from these Germans and the Spaniards for our locomotives. By the way, talking about the Germans, how is this going? Uh, this looks pretty... Um, successful for the Germans since nobody decided to join the French and they have far more troops, far more troops, yeah. Ooh, and they're pushing through and um, Elsa's Lorraine is, all, Lorraine is all, all half recovered already. Wow, they're marching on to Paris. I, I have no idea where this massive drop of the enemy, uh, of the enemy, the French is not the enemy. <laughs> Sorry guys, uh, where the massive drop of the, of the battalions came in from the French and by the way, what the hell, I mean... Mexico has a higher GDP now than France, the French Empire, not than the Germans. Okay, this is where it's, so there is probably, yeah, French, probably it's the internal problems. They have these landowners, they have their monarchy, they, oh, they have no, they turned back all their revolutionary um, successes. Sure, that might be where it's coming from. Let's see, are we going to see a new French revolution? It's French moving to... Oh, by the way, <laughs> look at that. We also have a higher GDP than the Americans. The, these damn slaveholders, are they? Are they still? Yes, they are. They are. So, wow, we are the most economic. <laughs> and we have lower population than them, so they're impoverished. Uh, people are looking happy to Mexico, not to the US. <laughs> There's these... Plantation economy conserve expand core territory. Yeah, these aggressive people that will come back for California for sure. Hmm. I mean, when we, I just, I, I'm so worried that I'm gonna oversee something and suddenly this explodes <laughs> and we're in a civil war. I don't want this to happen. Italy didn't form at all, despite San Marco existing as a republic, right? Crazy. And we get a Tamil... My Tamil, this is in Indian people, right? South Asian has... Uh, Indian is probably too, too wrong. Um, let's have a quick look where the Tamils are coming from. Is it Burma? Sorry, guys. I don't know if anybody... <laughs> my... Simple European mind... Um, Of course, I don't know the details about these kind of things. Show up, show up, show up, show up. Here, Tamil. Where are they coming from? Uh, globally. 
Ah, yeah, Indian, South Indian. Okay, sorry, I was right. <laughs> With Burma, I was absolutely wrong. So. And let's see how many of those come in. There's still space, of course. I mean, California is something else, but still. And yeah, with our economic growth, we are also coming back into a financially stable situation, which is nice to see. They actually have alliance with Ecuador, okay. What kind of... They have a republic as well, landed voting, okay. Here, universal suffrage, huh? Nice. You should be my friends, not the ones of New Gran Granada. John Nissa, exiled by Sweden, okay. Let's have a look at Tahiti. Can we do something over here since they're in our market also? And therefore, now more Indians are coming, okay, to Sinaloa and the surrounding states from. Uh, interesting, interesting, interesting. Sinaloa down here. This time in Bengali, I can tell for sure they're Indian. Nowadays Indian, of course, or in the end, Bengali. <laughs> and we got war propaganda. Convincing a population to commit its time, its resources, and its blood, all for the sake of victory, is a whole field of work on its own. More conscriptable battalions, but we have no conscription, but um, more moral loss. I mean, this is something we should think about, to be honest, since we have a growing population, and the enemy has more. And we have... Well, we can also just extend the army and the fleet, but... Yeah, uh, but once in a while we want to just grow our economy peacefully. <laughs> now we're gonna get to this uh, little university build-up. And Ignacio Zaragoza died. Oh, this is important, um, since... We should think about him for a moment, since he was a radical, even despite being uh, in the... Bur Petit Bourgeois, and I think due to him, also they liked us for long, even if we didn't do a lot of... Um, stop for a second. Even though we didn't do a lot of um, typical Petit Bourgeois movements, he was really helpful, so it was also a great man for us. And now we have a jingoist. Uh, he's more uh, the one who wants us to go to war. He's... Uh, Wants us to conquer uh, Panama and so forth. So there are voices that are getting louder and louder for that. Well, um, he, so the army needs a new general over here. We've got General Ernesto Flores. Yeah, he can be definitely promoted too. So he can command these guys. Oh, the third Mexican army can, I think, be transferred. Probably from El Salvador can definitely be transferred in the Ejército Mexicano. Which needs a new general. And I think I'm gonna go for uh, Porfirio Diaz. He's a historical character. Oh, nice. Um, then definitely also an Adamant D super good defender. Which is cruel. Yeah, let's go. We are still mostly defenders, so he's a reformer as well, so that's. We're making. Oh, there's maybe progress being made. That's interesting. Um, yeah, it was stalled for so long. Suddenly, uh, I didn't even get the point where we went over studies. So now we're in the voting progress and have a 50% chance to pass it. By the way, uh, yeah, the German Empire has formed. In the meantime, we had lost track and they took back um, the Rhineland and Alsace Lorraine, forming probably now um, world power number three after Russia and the G um, Great Britain, yeah, but they probably should overtake Russia also soon. A new powerful empire. And did they take the entirety of Schleswig? No. No, no, that's the historical border. So we have a new worldwide juggernaut. Let's see how Germany is going to behave over here with Ke Kaiser Oskar von Hohenzollern, the first one to lead them. Um, well, why not? <laughs> Do they have colonial? They have no colonial affairs. Let's see when they start to get active worldwide. So far they've been quite pacified and went the Bismarck way just to focus here on uh, on Europe. Let's see. In the meantime, yeah, we have 
back. But the investment pool is also building up since once again we have waterways in the construction. Now we're going also for universities. So for a short time, don't worry too much when our money, our balance goes to the deficitary. Since, yeah, this is our all non-private buildings. They will not go with the investment fund. Hmm... So what, let's uh, slowly have to think about the consequences since this was kind of a, basically, it was a distraction maneuver. Let, well, we have appointed bureaucrats. We have decree costs, taxation capacity, political strength of bureaucrats from that. Petit bourgeois and rural folks. What are we going to get here? Lower costs of bureaucracy, so we should have more of bureaucracy. More legitimacy. Mm, that would be helpful. Less political strength from wealth, okay. So basically we're gonna lose a lot of authority in the end, I feel like, since this gives us our decree costs. Well, I mean, we can stop a couple of these decrees, that's actually no problem. Yeah, I, to be honest, I'm, and, and I think that still local governors are elected by their constituents, the decentralizing power while making citizens easier to manage, I think... Yeah, this is also the, the, the way that makes sense for Mexico. It's a huge, huge country these days. A lot of uh, states with different um, ambitions and hopes, especially since, uh, since we expanded south, um, to fully integrate it, I feel like, just also for, um, for roleplay reasons, I'm definitely going to go with the uh, local state. And yeah, given the geography, which makes communication and centralization super hard, uh, it just doesn't make sense in my opinion. I don't know how it's these days, but I assume it's similar to the US also with a federal system, right? And once again, let me know how the situation, I guess you have state governors in Mexico these days. And um, I mean, of course, there's certain degrees of, yeah, this doesn't really fully cover with two different laws, how you can design a centralization or decentralization approach, but yeah. It's just an abstraction, of course. But let me know what you, if you're from Mexico, and you you can tell me and teach me something. I would be highly interested. And again, we got the rubber rush. Not gonna um, read it again to you. Um, we haven't found yeah rubber in Yucatan, right? What did we? Mm, oh yeah, there is. Yucatan is also coffee is possible a lot. Or in Guatemala, there we don't have so much either, right? Um, state construction minus 20% in Yucatan, it is minus 25, so actually Guatemala is, Guatemala is easier to build, so I'll send them to Guatemala. Also, to be honest, since they're quite unhappy and um, revolutionary down here, I would like to more couple of, with the migration attraction, a couple of Mexicans move in to populate the country, maybe. Let's have a look. Yeah, the assimilation hasn't really started so hardcore yet. Maybe I should stop the emergency relief here and the violent suppression and start rather to bring out the national why can't I not can I not? National values. Yes, for more assimilation. We don't need it by heart. I can do it up here too, no? Still not. We've got Francisco Reyes. The movement for worker protection. Yeah, this is something. Oh, he's from the military. That's kind of nice. I would like to see that on the long term. Um, definitely still uh, facing this situation. Uh, but worker protection, sure, is something we would like to initiate in our happy go lucky state in the long term. <laughs> Meantime, getting some universities out to come closer to our cap and get some more tech spreading uh, here or oh, mm, said our standard of living decreased a bit and here we go elected bureaucrats as mentioned we of course have the authority lag now uh, oh and now this is increasing for sure that's bad uh, well what I gotta do of course is that and forget about the national values to be honest I have to cancel that it's too expensive so let's keep it like that also keeps the radicals a little bit more in check. And let's see what we can do. But you see the legitimacy has increased, which is nice, which will give us a little bit more um, loyalists, which is good. If the standard of living increases, of course. 
All right, here we are. What can be done at this point to change the country? This looks amazing, no? This is going really great. I feel like we're making... If we start this, okay, industrialist is going to be de-radicalized. That is amazing. We get... So, guaranteed liberties, by the way, gives us migrate attra migration attraction. Less um, secession and revolution progress speed. Less radicals, more... Ra so, it's just... It's good uh, Good to have uh, one of these internal ones on the long term. So, we definitely need to get one. I would also have gone with National Guard, but guaranteed liberties. And it works, no? Catholic Church goes just to zero, which is easy... The rural folk to seven, we're going to lose their 10, 10 effect, but the rest? It's just great, I would say. Um, I'm quite sure that this... Uh, let's have a quick look if anything else in the, is... Um, what about your worker rights, worker protection? Yeah, it just radicalizes the industrialists even further. Um, poor laws always being supported by most people. This can be next, guys. Universal suffrage. No, industrials will hate this, of course. Guys, I think this is a no-brainer. Let's see if the freedom rights will cure all our problems. The revolution should be ending now. Yeah, with minus 10% since... There we go, we have them happy again. With a little bit of luck, they will go. They will lose also the minus 5. We lost, of course, now the... Infrastructure and here the support of the Catholic Church, but yeah, we, they will come back and that's okay for the moment. I'm not gonna do any of those things. Um, transportation shortage in San Salvador. What, what how come? Uh, probably here's some. Do we have any railroad? Yeah, but probably anybody, somebody's producing with. Do we have enough people in San Salvador? Not really. Uh, let's see what we can do over here. Yeah, we're tr doing everything with um, railroad transport down here. Maybe in the banana plantation, not. Mice farms are not. Maybe you can save up some people over here with harvesting tools. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, this is a little bit overbuilt because, yeah, I guess tiny countries, that's the advantage, of course, to have in puppets. They also have their construction um, their construction going on and um, promoting, uh, bringing out a lot of buildings, infrastructure. Maybe we should just... Get another railway out, but no. I mean, they are basically empty. These plantations down here, so we definitely don't need any. Don't need any transportation. And for yeah, rubber. Rubber maybe the most and also the logging camps. I will go back to road carts for the moment at least. Yeah, so at this point it's has gotten okay. And San Salvador has to yeah slowly fit in into our economy and so forth in the society. But uh here we go, oh go and here we go guys. It is gone! It is gone. The revolution is gone. It's the first time in a very long time. Uh, and it was a uh, weird maneuvering, but we got here and it's looking pretty well, looking pretty well of the rest. We shall see where, where we go. And now we lost the landowner, super happiness, sad. Bringing us financially a little bit in trouble and also we're losing authority again. So we have to get rid of some of this greener grass and encourage agriculture in Jalisco or agriculture in Bajio. I think this is something we can stop in the end. We don't have the, or we, no, we still need the West Bajio. We still need the income tax, the consumption tax. Here's more, right? Yeah, but this is quite irrelevant actually at the moment. So sorry, this is, can be stopped. No problem, and in the long term, yeah, I mean, now the productivity of the mice farms changed, that's true. 
but it is what it is let's have a quick look actually at our companies oops they haven't paid attention to them in a long time and some of them are absolutely not prosperous at all um and this button would be fantastic if we can bring it up so what have we have to, yeah once again coffee tobacco and sugar we have to see if we can sell some of that is there anything else here fundidora del fierro y acero de monterrey i mean this is kind of an historical one it should be we're building coal and steel maybe i should establish that one instead of the mexican metals yeah it's we're not extending this so much right now and we can bring it back later let's sort by productivity quickly see a lower premium steel now nah, also but now nah, we don't have so much steel loneliness we could think about this later on Munition, I don't want. Stand this one could be interesting. Mexico Metal Works. Uh, paper. But the Fundidora de Fierro y Acero de Monterrey is probably the right one to do, in my opinion, since we're extending this right now. So, guys, um, Mexican Metals goes out. Also, by the name, we need the Spanish name, of course. Um, so, where we go, where we go. Uh, I was just. Are you kidding me? Guerrero Minerals. What? Here gold, Mexico. Or are these ones for the fertilizer throughput? Also not uh, irrelevant, but I feel like steelworks and coal might be more useful right now. Oh, they were just... They were attainable, so we can't even get them. Oh, gosh. What do we need? Um, steel mill equal or bigger equal to five. Hmm. Yeah, Rio Grande. Hmm. Maybe I was a little bit premature with my move, but um, here we go. There they are. Yeah, maybe I think back in the day when I recorded the episode, we already built them explicitly for that reason. Okay. No, but the problem is then we don't get the building bonus, the construction bonus. <laughs> Let's... Uh, Okay, let's do Silalua. We have new workforce there anyways. First, sorry for the shuffleman. Sinalua will be prioritized. And then we definitely over... Yeah, Rio Grande, there will be others first. So this is how we do it. Yep. And then we can also bring it in when once they're being built and shuffle in a couple of the coal mines before we run into a lack of coal okay Woo. and then we think yeah now we, you have your own here you get an overview over the available um companies quickly or attainable and available of course um i'm slowly going to pause if you want to have a close reading and have a close read let me know what you would do which one you recommend me to use since um, we have a couple of possibilities or uh, we have we really would like to definitely bring these ones to throughput ah oh, yeah let's do this quickly so sugar okay to the germans sugar um what was it coffee oh we need to definitely ex extend our coffee pro capacities and what was the last one was it oh god i'm in my brain sugar coffee and tobacco so let's see where's tobacco at um tobacco 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 uh yeah danes and germans like our tobacco and i think we're definitely gonna just uh, don't forget about it we're gonna see when this will happen i will increase a little bit of our all of them basically tobacco do we have anywhere already a good amount I want to make just five that we have round numbers here. Nicaragua, no, 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 Veracruz. Okay, let's do it like this. Tobacco, what else? Sugar. And coffee, more importantly than sugar, actually. Ah, uh, this was already quite well.
All right, our new plantation offensive to, to flank our auto industrialization. I think it has to go hand in hand so we achieve a really good uh, happiness and prosperity here. This has been a long episode already, so this is a good moment to stop. Um, let me know what you think, especially, of course, about what I asked. I've been asking you about history, Mexican history, um, some Central American history, or, of course, our companies for in-game mechanics. Hope you liked it. Uh, if you did so, um, it would be fantastic if you leave me a like and subscription, since it costs you nothing and makes me very happy and pr uh, motivates me to promote, uh, promote, produce further videos and so forth, and maybe also some with a little deeper and higher production. Uh, effort. Apart from this, it's just fantastic if I see you in the next time in the next episode. Until then, bye. Your strategy wolf.